Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I'm Ronnie Silva from Is All About Love, obviously. Uh, and I'm here today to show you one of my favorite recipes. I've been hanging and trying to get this recipe on the website for quite a while now, but I just haven't find, found the time. So today it happens to be a nice, quiet afternoon. There's no one around. So I, gonna, I decided just to do this recipe, perform this recipe and record this video so you can learn how to make your own chicken liver pate. Um, it's fairly simple, um, but before we get it started, let me just tell you why I like this recipe so much. There is several reasons that I really want to share this recipe with you. One of them is just because I really like chicken liver pate. I find it really tasty. I think it's really, really tasty. It's a fairly simple recipe to perform. Um, and is extremely nutritional. Um, kids tend to really like uh, chicken liver pate as well, so that's um, a really good chance of getting some good vitamins into that. Uh, liver, it's being used by um, many traditional cultures around the world as a power source of vitamins. It's very, very rich in vitamin A, D, E, K, B12s, and folic acid and you can go on and on why it's so important to eat liver um, in a regular basis but I just don't want you to get too um, tangled up on nutritional values and and try to sell this recipe just for the sake of uh, nutrients my main reason here is to teach you how to make this simple pate so you can enjoy the taste of it okay Obviously, you're gonna get some nutritional benefits, but the main reason is just so you can enjoy a really nice homemade chicken liver pate. So, to make this recipe, basically what we're gonna need are those ingredients. First of all, of course, you're gonna need the chicken livers. So here I have 375 grams of chicken liver, and then I'm gonna scale all the rest of my ingredients accordingly to this 375 grams of chicken liver. So you do the same at home. See, wh how, uh, see how much chicken liver you got and work it out. Cream, butter, so organic pastured raised butter, two shallots or a medium sized onion, some garlic, I'm gonna need some bay leaves, nutmeg, aniseed stars, fresh thyme, some fresh rosemary, some black pepper, and last but not least, I'm gonna use a little bit of red wine. I do not have port. Normally port works really well for this recipe. I don't have it, so I'm gonna use that. Uh, this is just a shihaz. And a little bit of brandy. Um, and of course, a little bit of salt to taste. Ah, and I cannot forget a little bit of chicken stock. First of all, peel the onion. I will find a compost bin so I can keep things clean here on the table as much as I can. Um, just, just peel those uh, onions first. Um, they, this recipe works really, really nice with shallots. I, it happens that I don't have any here. And I'm far away from a supermarket or a shop that I can buy on uh, shallots. So I'm just gonna go with onions. Basically what you have to do is just roughly chop it. You don't have to be too worried about the size of the dices. Those are gonna be blended later on, so it's gonna be all good if they are different sizes. So you can see my skills are not really refined here, and yours don't have to be true. It just pretty much just dice them, really. Put those onions in a bowl that will suit. Smash your garlic. You want a nice large. I'm gonna use a large globe for the amount of chicken livers that I'm using today. Um, if you are a fan of garlic, don't be shy. It uh, really enhances the flavor of the finished pate. 
chop 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 again it doesn't have to be too refined just add that to the bowl add the rest of the ingredients to this bowl so a few bay leaves I'm using uh, about three bay leaves they are all small nugmet I use this uh, microplane just to microplane some nugmet so great some not finely grated and nugmet that the amount will do add that to the same bowl one nice whole aniseed star for the amount of chicken livers that I'm using again some black pepper I have to reinforce I'm I'm doing all that based on the amount of livers that I'm using okay so this is some um, thyme springs of thyme and a very important part of the process as well is to dry the livers before you fry so the livers if you don't dry them they pop quite a bit and it can hurt your arm so what I'm doing here is just putting the chicken livers in a clean kitchen cloth and give them a nice pat dry before I start frying them and for the reduction you need some butter you add all that onions the chopped onions and the seasoning to a pot and then you start frying you bring some butter heat some butter up and you start frying your livers um, you want to just gently fry them they must should be it's still pink inside um, and you remove them from the pot and you carry on um, frying the next batch so here is the fr onions also frying with some butter remove the chicken livers from the pot while they still pink in the middle that's the whole idea, you don't want them to overcook, okay? You can retain, you can maintain the butter in the fry pan while to fry the next batch of chicken livers. This is leftover butter. Put this um, kitchen cloth uh, to wash right away so it doesn't get stained. Okay, now I'm gonna add the cooked chicken livers to a blender with the cream okay and I'm gonna give this a good blend through a sieve to obtain, to, to eliminate all the sinew from the livers so that will result in a better, more smooth pate, okay? I use a spatula just to push that through and keep reducing that sauce in a very low heat Okay, so after you have reduced out that, it's a nice thick syrup, you remove the thyme, bay leaves, and aniseed star, and you're gonna add that to the blender. Stay there, please. You don't want to stay, eh? I'm gonna add a couple of pinches of salt, and a dash of brandy. Oops, maybe a little bit too much, it'll be fine. Blend out the onions, garlic, make it out nice and delicious. And then I'm gonna add the um, pate mousse into the blender. To finish it off, let's put this Pate to the sieve once more. Delicious. And what I'm gonna do now is just pour this pate into ramekins and set in the fridge for four to six hours. So I post some pictures of the final dish so you can 
have an idea of how it looks once it's set. That's it. Um, I have sort of to cut it off because my battery is just about to finish. So, cheer guys. Thanks for listening. And if you like the video, just please do the thumb thing, you know. Cheers.